So yes, everything done in the shop is designed not only to fit in with, but also to complement and add to the vibrant downtown feel of Moscow. So not only is the culture itself of this auto shop part of Moscow, and we want it to be part of downtown Moscow, but it brings business to local shops, and as Isaiah mentioned. And I think this, I believe, is actually the most important reason for having this auto shop in downtown Moscow, because auto shops placed a mile or more outside of downtown, like Meineke or uh, Moscow Auto Service, I mean, you're forced to drive out to that place and either bring someone with you to give you a ride back if it's going to be a long service, or you're just forced to sit there and drink coffee that doesn't really taste good uh, and wait for your oil change or whatever it may be. Um, and so what we want to do with Erber Automotive in downtown is provide a place <laughs> where you can come drop your car off and potentially just walk home if it's gonna be an overnight service or something like that, or you can go grab lunch with a friend at the co-op, you can walk to a coffee shop, you can uh, run whatever errand you need to while in downtown. Um, and so with those two things addressed, and again, I think that second thing is really vitally important to this hearing, that it, what we want to do is bring business to local shops in downtown Moscow. With those two things aside, I'd like to address a couple specific concerns that were uh, submitted by letter and in the Board of Adjustment hearing. The first and chief concern that I'd like to address was from uh, Chief Fry. Uh, and he was concerned about blocking police traffic in emergency exits uh, when they're responding to calls. And Isaiah and I met with uh, Chief Fry the day before the hearing because it came to our attention kind of last minute. And while Chief Fry was unwilling to remove his letter because he said, this is something I need to take a stand on. I'm not quoting him directly, but just to give you a gist of what was said, I, I have to take a stand on this. This is something uh, I think I need to do. He also said to us personally that this is something we can easily work out and uh, in discussions. Mr. Hang, hang, Mr. On, Mayor. hang on, hang on, just a second, Walter. Um, uh, Mr. Mark, we're gonna take Chief Fry's letter as how Chief Fry gave it because that's all we have that's all we have from Chief Rye. Wonderful. So okay. whatever your conversation with him that was not on this record, we're not going to listen to. Walter, did you have a my point exactly? Okay. okay. Wonderful. Thank so you. So any, you know, look at the conversation. We're not trying to be hard on you. Either. We're just trying to be as fair as possible. Of and course. We're asking lots of questions, and this council's up here going to make it some type of a determination. <clears throat> And so we're trying to get every bit of information we possibly can so we can make the right, correct decision. Of course. Okay, go ahead and Thank continue. you. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, <clears throat> the second concern was brought predominantly by owners and employees of the Yarn Underground about parking. Um, and I believe most of the information that the Yarn Underground uh, owners and employees had at the time of their complaints were based uh, on a, on something that Isaiah and I had been working on previously, uh, long previously, I believe in November, we were considering uh, and asking the city to provide allocated spaces. Obviously that would have infringed on the Yarn Underground and when we realized what that implied, we uh, dropped that idea and instead we decided to get lots outside of, uh, outside of public parking. And so parking honestly is not a concern at this point and we completely addressed that in the Board of Adjustment hearing. Um, and so we just want to make it clear that we aren't infringing on the current businesses public parking uh, besides brief portions where customers will park before their car is moved. Um, so the second concern was traffic flow. Um, Alley traffic will be carefully monitored and vehicles will not be stopped in the alley at any time. I really want to make that clear because we don't want to be stopped in the alley between 4th and 5th when police officers need to get out. Uh, we addressed this in the last hearing, but I think it's really important to mention. Um, we got two yes, questions I'll, I'll ask. I'll call Walter and I'm gonna come back and sir. Catherine had a question as well. Okay, on, on, if I may on that point. Yes, sir. <clears throat> in, the, in the documents it talks about the roll-up door at the back being closed at all times. I'm one of your employees. You tell me there's a yellow Ford down at the corner club block, go get it, bring it down, we got room for it. I go down then I drive up the alley. How do I get the door open and how do I not sit there and wait while somebody opens the door? I'm, I'm honestly not sure about that documentation. That wasn't anything that Mira Isaiah said or that was in our application. So the door will not be closed at all times? The door was not intended to be closed at all times, no sir. It'll, 
Okay, I'll, I can look in the record and see where I saw it, but it was in there. Okay. okay why don't you look for that, Walter, and I'll go to okay. Catherine here. Catherine? Mine had to do with the parking. It's kind of following up with, so you say hours are from 8 to 5. What if you don't get to all the cars that are parked yeah. around town? Oh, yes. So whether or not we get to all the cars that are parked around downtown, they will be moved from their parking spots as as soon as our mechanics are able to get to them. So there will not be cars overnight. Well, it's Friday from, night, though. Yeah. Like Friday night, you got three cars that are parked around town. You hadn't been able to get to them. Like, what do you do? The cars will be moved to our lots. I, I don't foresee a situation in which cars will be left in our lots over the weekend, but that is a possibility, but they will not be left in city spaces. These are the lots you're talking about that you folks have rented. Yes, sir. What you're talking about now. The Leonard I think I'm, I'm um, was thinking back through what I had read. Walter, I think the, the door shut at all time cr criteria is five of the application is one place. for noise abatement. I think that was part of it. There was, there was a statement in there about um, the, some of the noise and the dust and that sort of abatement was going to be that the door is going to be closed. There it is. The, it is. Number five, the roll-up door will remain closed so, at all times. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> was that the one that you saw, Walters? Was that that I, I'm, I'm still just not sure how you Did don't it. stop in the alley to get right. the door open, but that's okay. Okay. Go ahead and continue. Well, I, I apologize for my misunderstanding on that point. Um, I guess my response uh, off the cuff would be that if an employee was to bring a car in, the door would be open before they left to go get the car. Okay. But that's just my initial response. Okay. Um, so... Yes, so that's, uh, yes, so back to traffic flow through the alley. Um, we are obviously our top priority, and it all, will always be our top priority, is making sure an emergency vehicles can get through alley without obstruction and that pedestrians are not endangered uh, walking across the sidewalks in those places. So um, that, that is always going to be our top priority, and that's the main reason that only Uber, Uber Auto employees will be driving the cars through the alley because uh, all of them are very aware of the situation and everything that we need to be cautious of. Um, so with that aside, I'd like to move on to the last big concern that was brought up in the Board of Adjustment hearing and that was discussed was of noise and odor. Um, Jonathan does heavy repairs in a cramped little garage under his house right now. And, there have been a couple times where I've stood in that garage while he's doing. Mr. Mock, no, wait a you're second. actually We're starting to talk a little bit about it, um, bringing in evidence talk. about what he's done. Yeah. Of course, okay. We need to talk about right down here, uh, Mr. Mark, where you're going to be, not somebody's house where there's repairs being done now. And okay, yes, what sir. What may or may have happened there is irrelevant to what we're trying to determine here. Okay. Well, then let me move back to what was discussed in the Board of Adjustment hearing and how we address this. Uh, Jonathan operates a very clean and quiet operation. He always has, and he always will do that. And Erber Automotive is going to do the same thing in whatever location we operate in. Uh, as was discussed in the Board of Adjustment hearing, um, the walls in the back of the auto shop are 18-inch thick brick walls. Uh, and a lot of the noise concerns from the businesses next door were addressing construction that was going on in the front of the building where the walls are not brick all the way through. It's only in that back portion of the building that the walls are actually a lot more thick and a lot more uh, soundproof. Um, and so we addressed all of that in the last hearing, and I believe that's all I can present that is not anything new. So if you guys have any questions, that would be wonderful. Questions for Mr. Monk before we turn I, I, back. I, I, I have a question, Mr. Mayor, but I think it's probably better for Ryan at this time. Maybe one, okay, of, the, one of the applicants Mr. might want to help. We'll get Ryan back up here and we'll put him on the spot. And if we need one of your, you or Mr. Taylor, well, we'll call on you, okay? Thank you. Thank and just you. for procedure, are, are they rest? What's that? Are they resting their first? Yeah, that's what he said. He said he was done. I, he said he was done, so or complete, so. If I may? Yep, go ahead, Walter. Ron, how did we get to gasoline service station? The application yeah. does not state oh, in the in the beginning gasoline service station. It says would like to operate an automobile automotive repair shop in the rear section of four oh seven South Washington. The staff report subject 
is for a proposed auto service and repair center at 407 South Washington. That is repeated in various places, yet when we get to the relevant criteria and standards that were found by the Board of Adjustment, they say the application before the Board of Adjustment was for a, quote, gasoline service station, unquote, their quotes. How did we make that step? So the, how the did, not how we. How did y'all make that step? Correct. Mm -hmm. So the definition of a um, automotive and service station again goes back to that definition. The scope of work tied more in line with what the relevant criteria and standards of a, um, a automotive service station would be. However, going back to those original definitions, that's where it directed our attention to go to a gasoline service station. So the, it's it's with. I guess Bill could probably shine more light on the, the overall definition on how the the city uh, staff came to that particular conclusion. But really, it's 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 where we look at the definitions of the proposed use and how it's applied to the conditional use process for central business. Well, well if I may, ahead, let, let me ask more. you this. <clears throat> John made a comment a little earlier about being somewhat confused, and that the more I hear, the more confused <laughs> I get. <laughs> The board found against the application because it was for a gasoline service station and following the trail of definitions both in the code and other places. Is an automotive repair shop permitted? I mean, if they, had, if they hadn't jumped to a gasoline service station, where would we be? The automotive repair station is not listed as a defined location underneath Central Business District. So the finding of the board would have been the same if it had, if they had never talked gasoline. Correct. Thank you. I think I'm clearer. Okay. Can we, can we discuss things? Yeah, we can discuss point? whatever you want. Yes. But um, <coughs> I started earlier on this line of reasoning, but. Personally, I'm not opposed to this type of business in the central business district, that I think it could exist in harmony with the other businesses that are downtown. But the way the code is currently written, it's stepping on the line of the definitions. And, and I think that maybe the cart's gotten ahead of the horse here, that perhaps the best way to approach it would be to take this back to planning and zoning and change the A definition. Board of adjustment. Oh, okay, something different. It needs to go. Zone. What is permitted in the zone would have to go before planning and zoning and change that so that this type of business could easily be accepted as a conditional use within the zone. That that would be the, the best way to approach it rather than, well, we're going to make an exception even though we're stepping on the line here. That's but how that, it looks to me. But that's not what we're deciding here tonight, too. No, we can't, yeah, no, we we can't, can't. do that, but we can, I mean. Yeah, that's a good discussion. Uh, John? John? Uh, uh, Clarify stepping on the line, if you would, for me, please. Because what? an automotive repair shop is not allowed as a conditional use in the central business district. And clearly that's the purpose of this business, is to be an auto repair shop. The fact that they, they might use oil <laughs> doesn't, doesn't yeah. take it away from being an auto repair shop, which is not a conditional an allowable conditional use in the zone. So it, it just needs to change, the definition of what's allowed in the zone needs to change somewhat in order for it to be inside the line. That's how I see it. Okay, John, it's right here. John, I'm sorry, uh, what Rod said earlier that the definition of a gasoline station or a automotive repair shop uh, are essentially the same because it says you use oil or lubricants or am I totally wrong about that Rod or well just for the definition on what would be allowed the gasoline gasoline station what they were trying to be most likely what it would be allowed down there I'm saying if you sold oil or um, gas or other automotive fluids or lubricants and minor repairing the only place for an auto repair shop is um, li listed is with the garage, and I believe that's in the industrial zone. Yeah. So just in our code, it's not well defined in there. 
And so they were trying to find a way that what they were trying to do, if it could actually fit in this. And then the decision is, what is minor repair? Walton. Round peg, square hole. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to agree. I, as much as I support the idea of this business in our community, I can't find a compelling argument that hasn't already been made to do anything but sustain this decision. I, on the other hand, feel that uh, what they are trying to do meets six of the seven criteria, and to me, not meeting the first one is very nebulous. And it's uh, kind of like, well, we kind of like what you do, we don't kind of like this, and so we're going to go say these six things are fine, but this one here is kind of iffy, so we're going to go against it, and I think that's wrong. Um, I, I don't think that that's the way we should uh, approach this issue, and if we do need in the future to send these uh, definitions back to planning and zoning, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine, and and let them, uh, if uh, they need feel the need to go through their process and and bring it back to uh, the city council and uh, go from there, but. As it stands now, I, I'm in favor of uh, letting them have their conditional use permit. Art. Yeah, I'm not real keen on limiting the entrepreneurship of people who want to set up a business and run it and do it well. I think that's one of the things Moscow should be doing. Agreed. However, given the strictures of our code and where we sit with this, uh, it doesn't meet the definitions under the Section 1, as near as I can see. And beyond what the Board of Adjustment had to say, there's still issues existing about public safety relative to Chief Fry's letter. There's also the issue of the noise, and even though the back walls <coughs> might be 18 inches thick of brick, there's still a door through it that is not 18 inches thick as well. And so I see other issues with this too. Uh, further, there are other zones within the city that are more appropriate for both uh, use by right and use by permit elsewhere in the city where a uh, business like this would be uh, much better placed, I believe. Okay. I concur with Art. Okay. Well, what do we want to do, folks? Mr. Mayor, I, I, would, I would make a motion that we sustain the finding by the uh, Board of Adjustment. I second it. Okay, we've got a motion by Walter and a second by Art to sustain uh, the denial of the CPU. Correct? CUP. <laughs> Sorry. I'll start to roll, John. Um, no. So the motion was to sustain the decision from the Board of Adjustment. To do now their application? Yes. Aye. 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 And aye. Okay, so it is, uh, goes with what the Board of Adjustment says. So thank you, Ryan, for your presentation. Thank you, thank you for everybody's, uh, for what the information they gave us.